Walker is also <laughs> not available. Lucian taken off the table by Immortals. We've got the Kalista and the Rumble band out. Now, an important thing for y'all here, that is not a missed ban from FlyQuest. It's just a misfire on the graphic. That is Nocturne. Oh, it, it looks away. just like Nocturne, Yeah, actually. it's just Nocturne cast yeah, Paranoia, the and now you can't see them. So Nocturne <laughs> is not available. That's just an error there. Don't worry about it. Immortals locking in the Varus as the first pick here for Tactical. Yeah, if if the you know double support items are off of the table, Varus is for sure premier pick right now, the go-to. The lethality builds are so good right now with lethality being straight up one armor penetration. Um, but the Ash Jin combinations also playing for bottom lane, playing for plates has been a really strong duo lane and Ash getting through, FlyQuest snagged that one up really quickly here. Nicely picked up, but what do you want to pair it with here? We've got Archer versus Archer combat in the first two. FlyQuest still plenty of powerful picks available on the table for them. Inspired picking up the Vi from a target like Varus. Vi has plenty of options. Yeah, Vi has been super popular here for that guaranteed engage. And in the hands of Inspire too, who wants to be the main shot caller on this FlyQuest team, uh, is a, has very strong opinions about the game. It's one of the reasons that FlyQuest did pick up Inspired in the first place and get him back here on the Rift, the former two-time MVP. See what they respond with here, even before Azir has been picked up. And we've seen Corky picked Man. in isolation without even considering matchup already uh, in multiple occasions as well. Just so strong on the patch. Uh, with the new items added, has a lot of a uh, lot of options to go to, and always gives that really good pairing with Varus. Every time you get your hands on the lethality Varus, you want some magic poke to go with it. Flowers, yup, got both flavors. You know what I'm excited about? One of the big things about LCS always being first to the punch this year <laughs> is we're gonna be the first ones that once they nerf Corky, we don't have him in the league anymore. <laughs> it's gonna be great. But for now, he's on top. He is running some stuff in the mid lane. They're gonna lock in the rel next to the Varus. This bottom lane for Immortals Man has some lockdown. It certainly does. But the FlyQuest bottom lane, that Jin Ash I was talking about, they did end up pairing the Ash with the Jin, uh, kind of as expected for that super strong pushing for tower plates, pushing for money. And when you see this draft start out that way, you also start to think about junglers prioritizing uh, possible ganks on bottom side, dives on bottom side, instead of the grubs and trying to use the grubs as a little a little lure, a little bait yeah. up to the top side oh, for their opponent. Oh, go get the grubbies, uh -huh. yeah, they're yeah, great. Yeah, go get the grubbies, I'll dive your bottom lane, and <laughs> it'll be fine. And we'll, we'll earn our turret plate money the old fashioned way mm -hmm. without the grub debuff. As we get further here though, uh, we are seeing the Cassante uh, bands rise up as well. See if they, if they double down on this one because they're gonna be the ones looking to answer the Corky in the mid lane for the mid lane pick. So Immortal's right. probably just gonna double down there and give a couple of the protection bands. Corky has been super safe uh, generally. And so taking out some of the other Jensen-like control mage options that he has played. So another one here. Uh, fortunately, the bands for FlyQuest are uh. just having a little bit of trouble showing up today. They're a little bit stage shy. That is not a miss band. That is a Jax. So it is a double top side band here in the second half from uh. FlyQuest. Cassante and Jax taken off the table. Remember that that all powerful Udyr was first banned by Immortals over on the other side. What will the final ban for Immortals be? I'm with you. I'm expecting some more mid lane protection there with the Corky. Do you get rid of the Azir, that classic? Lullaby. Nope. We're going to get rid of the Jace instead, getting rid of some of that long range physical damage additional poke. Yeah, Corky usually liking his, his poke chances versus the Azir, even though it is the most popular champion on the current patch, uh, is such a versatile champion. Even though most people are going with Nasher's Tooth, sometimes we've seen the Conqueror Azir, sometimes you get the Hail of Blades Azir for the uh, more threatening lane phase yep. burst. The Conqueror, really good if your opponents have a very tanky frontline, in which case I think Immortals probably will be drafting a tankier frontline here. Rel plus something else uh, for having a two-stage engage, really strong frontline to set up for their poke, for their Corky, uh, Corky Varus here. So um, probably gonna go that direction and Jensen will be happy to get his Azir, but it is gonna be the blinds for Immortals since yep. Castle is on blue side. And you mentioned, even though you can't see it right now on the client, the Jax is the other band here. And the premier champions there um, were illustrated for, 
for Castle as Jax and Nar, but he goes with the Aatrox. Okay, this time around. Yeah, lots of lots of top side potential bands there with the Rumble, the Udir, the Jax, the now, Kasante all out. Whippo, Whippo has a lot of options here for countering, uh, for countering and playing into the Aatrox, but we get the Blitzcrank, so okay. well into the jungle, and we get the Blitzcrank pulls for bottom side into the double range matchup. I really like Blitzcrank into two immobile champions like Ash and Jin. Yeah, if you miss those pulls, you're going to be in a world of hurt. But if you hit him, man, you're the hero of the day. It's the story of Blitzcrank for every game that he plays in, but particularly against two targets that have no way to get out of it. There's a lot of opportunity here. And Ole just loves to play that engage. It loves to play the aggressive side of the matchup. Always looking to play like kill sides of matchups uh, instead of pushing for tower plates and, and pushing for those CS leads. But that's one of those Whippo picks. That oh, counter. yeah. The Olaf comes in. Definitely early stages has the possibilities of running down the Aatrox before Aatrox gets some uh, some levels in them. I want to see about junglers and if they take some uh, early routes up towards that side. Because even with the changes to top lane walls, top laners are not immune to ganks now. And very oftentimes you can just do lane ganks. Super underappreciated, but going through lane into the side lane brush here, as long as your top laner is, is keeping track of the enemy top laners, uh, trinket wards can be super effective, especially when you have these double melee, uh, you know, volatile lane matchups where Olaf just always wants to trade health with you, always wants to threaten you with the with the undertoed chase down. So the both today with Licorice and yesterday with Double Lift, having these pro player guests on, we've been asking them, okay, seeing both drafts, which one would you rather be playing on? And you were a pro player a little bit further ago, but still a pro <laughs> Jensen's now here on the squad. A lot of people are expecting this to be a top of the table team. Immortals, a lot of preseason predictions, the opposite for them. When we all flew our tier list <laughs> yeah, yesterday, very much the Immortals was bringing up the rear across every single ranking. So I think these guys are gonna have a lot to prove. They certainly do. And, and sometimes it really lights a fire uh, under your team as far as motivation, trying to prove the doubters wrong, prove the haters wrong. For a lot of these Immortals players, you know, it kind of feels like some some last chances here on the LCS stage, and they've gone through quite the journey. Let's see what they can uh, do here versus FlyQuest, though. Bwipo with the Ghost Teleport Olaf counter pick red side number five here up in the top lane. And Whippo's just someone who likes to theorycraft about the game so much. Oh, yeah. When I'm looking at a matchup where it's like, okay, you need to know when you're going to have the power advantage, when you can engage on the guy, like what those situations look like when they're going to come out advantageous for you. This is a guy that I trust to study that, practice that, be a part of that as much as humanly possible. So I'm expecting there to be some kind of like very early PvP up here in this top side that leads to some kills. Definitely agree there. Inspired carry. Let's see, what do we got here? A mortal shirt signed by the players. Nice. Okay, just a ward on the blue buff here. So Whippo's going to keep an eye on that one. They know that at least our Mayo is not there Ooh. right now. Yeah, we got some Immortals. So FlyQuest may have won the Twitch chat vote, but Immortals got the cheers here in the studio. Yeah, Immortals won the arena vote. FlyQuest won the internet <laughs> vote. We'll have to see which one proves superior. As early on here, Mask and uh, Jensen just trying to farm up, trading those back and forth a little bit. Both of these champions scaling incredibly. We've all seen the Corky Azir match up enough times to know that this is not one we expect to be super active super early. Yeah, especially with the changes to mid lane, moving the brush back makes it more difficult for junglers to surprise them. Uh, both those mid laners, of course, farming mid laners as well as having inherent dashes in their kit is what makes yeah. that matchup um, so so safe over the course of so many years. Meanwhile, bottom lane, this is what we were looking at. The pressure yeah. with Masu and Busio receiving the first gank, but having a ward in the pixel brush. Yeah. Armeo going to wrap around the long way here. You can see though, Inspired also pathing down towards this area. Armeo could just be waiting for him, expecting Inspired trap. to do the counter gank here. And yep, there it is. 1v1, this one's gonna favor Vibe pretty much every single time, especially when the rotation from the bot lane comes in, Armeo flashing away from the Deadly Flourish there. That is one expensive ward that he just put <laughs> up on blue buff. Flash for ward on blue buff uh, to guarantee that you know for sure, 100%, Inspired is currently 
Killing doing the blue buff. Killing the blue buff. All right. Well, you have that information. <laughs> Hopefully, it ends up being worth a flash. Yeah. Fair enough, though. Uh, of course, it is Rel, so you're you're gonna have the hex flash, and you'll still have options. It's just not as snappy as a flash, a Q flash. Q flash is just so the strong. bread and butter, the best. Uh, and first combo you should learn on, on Rel because it removes the reaction time from your opponents. It allows you for the Omega big uh, AOE engages or just Ooh. even solo engages. Nice little movement here from Busio and he is rewarded with an arrow shot in the back of Ole. Masu and Busio both looked at as very valuable prospects coming into In fact, this. the most valuable the most prospects. The most valuable process, prospects, some might say. MVP often standing for a different abbreviation, but it can also mean this one. As let's see what mid lane might turn into. Our Mayo, I think, is going to pass through here. Not a whole lot to look at, but yeah, most valuable prospects. Busio in summer of 2022 as Ole finds a pull on him down here in the bottom lane. But return fire from the FlyQuest bot side is going to make this still a relatively even trade. But Busio's got to be careful now having to blow that barrier. Ole also spending the Ignite to get him that critically low. And Inspired here has been hovering this, this rookie bottom lane here. Well, I mean, it's kind of cool how Busio was paired in his rookie year, you know, there with Double Lift and got so much so much training and mentoring. And now he's the mentor Yeah, uh, coming in here and being one year ahead of Masu and trying to be the, the elder in the bottom lane. Inspired, though, is, is really the one who has been hovering around, shadowing that Jin Ash lane, making sure they didn't fall prey to some Rel ganks plus blitz, blitz hook combinations. But Whippo, I've got a fun stat for you. All right, what do you, what do you think? Because if you saw the game yesterday where uh, Whippo was playing Udyr. Mm -hmm. um, what would your guess be as to his forward percentage? And that is the percentage of time in the first 14 minutes that Whippo spent across the halfway point. Oh man, I'm You really... know it's high because he was playing Udyr and he was proxying a lot. Okay, so give, give me, me that uh, hint. It's over 50% for sure. So. 61. 71%. Okay, I got one of the numbers right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that at... He was Close he up. was living in the enemy jungle, warding up the enemy jungle, taking the enemy jungler camps, um, doing all those really annoying Udyr things, um, and he's he's starting it off here with Olaf with a little bit of doing a little pro proxy farming there as well. But Armeo's going to move right in, and off of the resets, yeah. they'll be the ones to trade that first dragon that FlyQuest got eventually for the grubs of their own. Yeah, Ed, Ed, and Eddie fall to Armeo and Castle rotating down there just to make sure that they can get these uncontested. Remember, five is the sweet spot where you get to spawn the little grubbies. Oh, yeah. So that means they only have to get two of the next three and they will be in business. We'll keep track of whether or not that's possible or whether FlyQuest is able to stop them in time. Back in the mid lane, back in the top lane, everybody's got ulties up there in those solos, but down here in the bot side, it's Ole landing the pull. But Masu's deadly flourish forces Immortals to fall back before they can find any more damage onto Busio. Only three CS separates the two players here, and there's that much extra in the rain min ranged minions sitting around for Masu still to pick up. So very, very even lane state, honestly, across the board. Yeah, I kind of, I want to circle, I want to highlight the serrated dirks that both AD carries have picked up because this item is so strong with the lethality going to one armor penetration for uh, yeah. for value here. And that's part of the reason, the main reason that both of these AD carries have been so highly prioritized. With the lane pushing though, it A makes it so dangerous. Oh. Quick little. Okay, uh, all I'm saying, and otherwise I'm just going to be <laughs> guessing. <laughs> that's okay, I got you covered. All right, I've been hard at work in champs queue, spamming games. We know them all. I like that. Do you even know the name of that one that has two made up words, the MR yes. item? Yes, it's funny because I was joking about it in the caster room before you guys even brought it up as well. Because <laughs> I did the same thing as you. I was like, Kanic Rookern? What is a Rookern? Uh, it, so it sounds what like- What is Kanic? Yeah, so he looked it up and it doesn't even, it doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yeah, a Rook is a bird. A and, rook? a rookery, and a Rookery is where you keep those birds. It's also the it's the building in chess. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But a rook urn is new. It is a League of Legends item. But what does Kanic mean? It probably means some some weird rune magic. Oh, it's, it's not a it's not a current word, but it's probably something to do uh, with the lore. Because the runes on the Kanic rook urn look kind of like Riven Sword runes. Oh, Man. so it's like ancient magic or something. I never read Riven's Lord. Yeah, there's, uh, uh, 
there is. Uh, I forget who made it, the sword, but there's some special people who made the sword. I think okay. the same people made the Canic Rooker. All right, okay. I'm down with that. Well, we are back into the game, and Whippo has found Castle here in the top side river. Just going to take a quick little trade with him. But once again, just the parity between the lanes right now, between the roles, I should say, because Jungle also sitting on just like neck and neck farm. It's a very, very even first eight minutes of the game. It certainly is. Especially since we went back those eight seconds. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's eight seconds of that, more parity. That really, that really evened it out. Uh, <laughs> it is going to be some exciting times coming, though, because I always love our early support recall timers for Blitzcrank. I was ah, hoping that we were going to get a, a roam here from Ole, but he's he's uh, only coming out through the gate now. Maybe there is a roam. He's going to link up with our Mayo. In day one, of course, it's only just one game. Oh, tactical, though. The curtain calls opened up. Tactical gets ulted on top of ulted. The first blood goes back over to Masu with the curtain call, but it was inspired locking him down to set it up. Flowers, you support left, you back the base, coming back out, and you just get 3v1 under tower with a vial to make sure the Jin snipes are gonna be able to come through. Really well done for FlyQuest there. Uh, very nice Ooh. timing for them, and Ole gonna this take a lot of damage. Is not good for Ole. He just now gets back to lane, does not think that Busio is still in that bush, ends up getting caught. The deadly flourish plus the follow-up from the Ash now means that even after just recalling, he's sitting in lane with less than half HP. All right, well, FlyQuest with the first blood money in the correct place. Ghost Blade Rush is done. Right on time there. Nine and a half so minutes. strong. Ghost Blade done. And it feels good, too, because even though you're skipping boots, you can just activate it as you walk right back to lane. Uh, the Lethality Rush, so, so good right now. So we'll see what Masu can do with so much of the story here of this FlyQuest team coming in is the pairing yeah. of those veteran voices in Jensen Inspired and Blipo with the young bottom lane. And with uh, Masu getting the early money, See how well he can use it. Exactly. You could see a little bit of an attempt there on Jensen. Nothing super serious coming through from Immortals. But we've got, what is that, 25 seconds until the next Drake of the game spawns. You've also got the second trio of the Grubs spawned up in the top side river. So neutral objectives available on both sides right now. I'm curious where everybody wants to focus first. Remember, it was first three Grubs to Immortals. First Drake back over to Fly Quest. Chains of Corruption flies out, but it misses. Ole wanting to try to see if he could pick one up on Masu with a little bit of a uh, sleight of hand trick, hoping that his focus was over on Busio instead, but not quite gonna work there. Armeo down here on this bot side river, still looking around to see if there might be any opportunities. Mm. As you can see, Mask also hanging around, trying to rotate down, has the package ready to go. Yeah, trying to get your timers down for packages is oh. one of the biggest things. Busio oh, had no flash. Pull! Busio's in some trouble to crash down. Crash is right on him. And Armeo is the one to pick up the kill. Now with a man advantage and a package advantage, you would have to think Immortals can secure this Drake. Mass just going to fly back into the mid lane, going in on Jensen. Finds a lot of burst, but now doesn't want to go too far as Immortals will still look for more here in the bottom lane. Ole is dialing these in. And Masu can hit again, but he's the one opening up the curtain call. Tactical needs some fancy feet. Oh! oh except the fourth shot missed, huh. but the fourth shot alone can't get it done. It is enough pressure, though, to stop Immortals from being able to do the Drake. I always love the mind games on dodges, because um, it starts out, you know, at the lowest level, you're like, ah, they're just gonna run in a straight line, right? Uh, easy to hit them. Then you go to this step two, and you're like, ah, they're gonna zigzag back and forth constantly. Yeah. But then, nice little slow movement there from Tactical. Did not uh, have too jerky of movement. Was able to dodge enough of the bullets, and even he got hit by the last one. Now it's up to Armeo to try and steal. Fortunately for them, Rel's got a giant damage modifier on Q, and yeah. so Q smite for Rel if you let him do an attempt at a 50-50 is huge, but nice little push out there from FlyQuest. They force him away. Yeah, bringing in Busio and Jensen just a second or two earlier. Made it so they were Count it. that done. Yup, there's no <laughs> follow-up. It doesn't mean a damn thing, but he hit it, and that's what matters. FlyQuest end up getting their second Drake here. There is a ward from them as well on that top side grub pit. Remember that with all three grubs going over to Immortals in the first rotation, FlyQuest wants to get at least two of these second three to stop them from being able to spawn the little grublings whenever they're pushing. Those little grublings, the void mites, the uh, 
The Eds or the Kevins, depending on which camp you're in right They're now. They're always the Eds for me. But Kevin's just something some guy made up. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, that was my childhood. I'm, I, I'm going with childhood here. I, I was 100% with you at the beginning. I originally was calling them them Eds too, but the, the Kevins is kind of growing on Kind of caught on I might be okay. like a 50-50. Okay. That was, that's like the most chaotic <laughs> option. You just don't even call them the same thing. It's like I calling think, them drakes and dragons and dragons yeah. and drakes. For sure, whenever I'm casting with you, I'll call them Eds. I Ed, appreciate that. Ed, You're Ed, a real Eddie. friend. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. um, but then I might go. I might go rogue. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Hey, you gotta, you gotta do what's right in the moment. I can respect that. Tactical. Trying to continue keeping the pressure on Masu down here as Ole just wants to keep clearing out wards. Blitzcrank loves being able to play from the fog, mm. and Ole is going to guarantee he can do just that. Another ward placed down over the wall there from Busio as he's trying to get rid of some of the vision that Immortals are setting up. Minion wave about to crash into the turret. Inspired is here. Ole now could be in some trouble, but Tactical's the one getting focused. Armeo coming in with a magnet storm as Tactical tries to get all the way out. It's Armeo who has to sacrifice his life as Immortals were not ready for the reinforcements from FlyQuest. Yeah, I think they gave they gave FlyQuest so much time to prepare their counter engage there. FlyQuest were 100% ready for this with Inspired hovering. Jensen with his finger, his uh, camera, both over the bottom side of the map to ready to teleport in. And if you whiff that engage there, as Armeo jumped in, didn't get anything there with the Rel engage, uh, Jensen just closes the door with his teleport in the backside, gets one there for FlyQuest. And with all the focus around the bot side play near FlyQuest Tier 1 turret, it's important to note the second Ed, Ed, and Eddie didn't get taken by anyone. They disappeared at the 14-minute mark as the Rift Herald spawned. So now that those aren't on the table, there will be no grubblings for either side this game. Only the three picked up by Immortals are going to be relevant. The Herald now also available as a big objective to take, with Mass going in, looking to continue, trading aggressively on the Jensen here. Chunks him down to about one-quarter HP. Hmm. Lucio got spotted having, heading over towards this way as he gets his much easier now try brush uh, ward down for the extra vision for their side lane since they rotated Jensen on over there. Honestly though, Harold has a ton of pushing power nowadays. And so Immortals to try and snag this one up, try and get their first tower for them with the use of that Harold. Jensen with an advantage in HP over Mask. Okay, they might have missed the Ash Arrow, but it don't even matter. Jensen gets the better of him in the Corky Azir matchup. Gets himself his second kill of the game here on that champ. FlyQuest up to almost a one and a half thousand gold lead thanks to that. That's really going to make the game hard to play for Immortals. Uh, that that kill right there. Jensen getting the flash and the extra money here. That taking down Mask plus them flexing. Uh, their muscles here with having Busio hover between lanes in Fog of War um, to be able to throw out Ash Arrows, that's going to get more dangerous later on. So Jensen will be very confident split pushing as well as having FlyQuest group up for these dragons. So it means Immortals are not going to have very good options later in the game. You know, FlyQuest are going to have the split push there with Hexplate, uh, Experimental Hexplate, Olaf, plus the Azir having side lane pushing advantages and they're going to be able to make you group up towards dragon stacking as well mm -hmm. and have really good setup. So Immortals, is they're in another really tough spot here. Um, we'll see what they can do moving forward. They do have a pretty high value item completion in the Frozen Heart for Armeo. Um, attack speed slow works quite well versus every single champ on FlyQuest. But uh, if he's not in there uh, in range and able to survive, might be difficult for them to pull off. Let's take a look here, though, as the Dragon Timer approaches. 30 seconds ahead of time, Flowers, All trying right. to get Vision Superiority first. Pick up your package, get into place. You've got a Blitzcrank, you've got the Corky package. Hopefully here for Immortals, they should be able to make this timing and this setup work for them to stop the dragon stacking. Right, the Corky package is always so huge. It's one of the things that makes this champion as strong as he is whenever he's in the meta, is how incredibly powerful he can play around neutral objectives when that package is available. As you can see, Immortals utilizing the strength they know they have with that to clear away this vision, make sure they maintain priority over this bot side. River, nice pull coming out from Ole, and Inspired is immediately bursted down. Busio and Masu now have to fall back as the teleport comes in. 
Castle's ready to reinforce. It's five men from the Mortals here in the bot side river. Mask went back over into the mid lane to push the wave out and apply a little bit of extra pressure as FlyQuest brings up Whippo and Jensen from the bottom lane. However, another beautiful pull from Ole means Whippo's in a bad spot. The curtain call opens up and Ole's the target. Everybody else falls in to protect the president and they still can't block the bullet. <laughs> Luckily, the president's wearing a football helmet and he's still gonna walk away. Now, El Mayo going in. He tries to hit the Q flash, but it ain't gonna work. Jensen escapes, and now Immortals are right back onto the Drake. There is no Jin ulti. There is no Ash ulti. Immortals are still trying to burst this down before Inspired is able to make his way back into the fight. Castle with a little bit of damage up the wall as Immortals get the Drake and have to get out. Everybody can disengage, and the objective goes to IMT. They do it. They stop the dragon stacking using those two pieces we're highlighting. The vision control with the Blitzcrank and the Corky package. With those two timings here, really good job for Immortals to actually get the pull onto Inspired. The perfect target taking out the enemy jungle immediately so that you have full smite advantage. Uh, then they immediately teleport in for the 5v4 advantage. Uh, and it gets a little bit dicey because Flyquest yep. don't want to let them have it just because they, they picked off Inspired and they try and uh, fight them off. But Ole does pull in the Olaf and get a nice little chunk on him there, taking away a lot of the, the frontline threats, allowing them to again go right back over towards the Dragon. <laughs> They all kind of moved down a little bit. Ole was just standing there, and, and the, the line just edged down a little, so his shoulder's poking out, but he's fine. As he said, he's got the, the protective gear on, and they were able to at least get the dragon and then get out, although they did lose a tower for it. Jensen going in big after Mask. Manages to hit him there with a shuffle. Busio showing up to guarantee it as FlyQuest find another pick here in the bottom lane. Nearly 3,000 gold lead now. Jensen, three out of the four kills for the team here on the Azir. This is another one of the big stories people were tracking with FlyQuest. Jensen, after his time on Dignitas, um, you know, having a, definitely a rough score for the team, yeah. but still putting in a lot of work in, in a lot of those games. And so people still had faith in him as being, you know, one of these great LCS mid laners and now being paired in this roster here with so many veterans uh, and the the younger bottom lane on FlyQuest, it, it really does seem to be coming together. Jensen having a great performance this time around, of course, with multiple kills onto Mask, onto the Corky, you know, picking the Azir into the Corky and then getting a lot of these advantages. And guess what, Flowers? Death cap on that Azir to follow oh. up Nasher's tooth. Jensen is going to pummel them now. He is ready to do some heavy lifting. But remember, we are trying to get you all more involved in the show here in 2024. So if Jensen is the person that you would want to hear from at the end of this game, should FlyQuest win, go ahead and let us know in the chat. Or if you want to hear from somebody else, let us know who you would like to most likely see interviewed in the event of the FlyQuest dub, just so we can make sure we're giving you all those interviews that you want the most, as Immortals are pulling up the Rift Herald here in the mid lane. Going to just use that one. It's no driver. Self-driving car crashes right into the turret <laughs> takes that one out immortals are going to get some value there but flyquest should be able to stop this there it is before it gets that second charge yeah if you don't drive it you don't get the void mites but if you're going to kill the tower anyway the void mats from the outer tower don't make it all the way up to the secondary tower they have a very short life yeah it's like those it's like those baby turtles trying to get to the water oh so, man but, that's grim but none of the void mites <laughs> get to the second no. tower flowers no, there's seagulls and alligators and all <laughs> sorts of stuff just chomping them. All right, FlyQuest is invading the enemy blue jungle now. They want to steal away this buff. Remember, now the Baron's on the map, we're at that point of the game where the buff becomes team-wide. Stealing these away can just help a ton. And there it is, all five blue buff up on the side of FlyQuest. We'll see. I'm still got my eyes so much on the supports, man. Both of them have so much pick potential with the arrows and the pulls. Yeah. I think that there's always a chance for either side to just have a great fight start. But FlyQuest, they're only concerned about fighting the Baron right now, and it seems like Immortals don't really know what's going on. We're finally seeing a couple pings over in the area. The Baron's at about half HP. Ole's gonna lead the charge. He'll look for a pull on somebody. Baron down to 1,200. It's already gonna be smited. Immortals was too slow, and Baron was too low. Armeo is already down. Whipple survives, and Cast so can't do a thing. The volley in his face makes him no more. As Mass Tactical and Ole have to try to get out now. Man, FlyQuest made that look easy. It was really good placement here from both, uh, you know, Busio flashing away from the hook. And then Jensen says, you shall not pass with his Azir ulti. They stopped the engage right in his tracks. Let's take a look at how it started out though. Immortals 
They feel like they gotta go for the risky play. The Baron's getting low. Armeo says, I'm going for the steal! They got the stun on him beforehand, so he couldn't get in there in time. Yep. So it's just really good stuff from Busio. Now, he flashes away from the Blitz hook. He's able to get out his Ash Arrow. Then Jensen puts up the Azir wall, and there's just no more forward movement there. Completely stopped at every angle here by FlyQuest. Really nice little movement from Whippo at the very end there too, right as the Baron goes down and they, they deal with Armeo because the piercing arrow just barely missed him that was flying out there from Tactical. He was at such low HP and the Varus having two lethality items, I feel like that would have taken him out. Oh yeah. But nice little dodge from Whippo to guarantee that they didn't lose anything there. Five and a half thousand gold lead for FlyQuest. They're also up a Drake with the Drake alive on the map that will guarantee them soul points should they secure it. I don't think Immortals is gonna have a very easy time contesting this, but they're still moving up, looking like they want to. Dragon already secured though. That's another thing with Azir. When you have Fed Azir on your team, these neutral objectives just melt. <laughs> they certainly do. Jensen's bringing the damage, no problem, that's covered. Plus, I just really love the confidence of the of the FlyQuest bottom lane. Busio, sometimes when you're playing the, the Ash Jin into a Blitzcrank lane, especially with another engager like the Rel, you can start to play really scared. You know, you'll, yep. you'll lose all of your presence um, as the squishy range support. But Busio has been so confident, um, not allowing them to kill him more than once, flashing away from a lot of these uh, key Blitzcrank pulls, and is constantly finding Armeo, hitting him with the Ash ultimate, um, again there by Dragon, just making sure he's not even going to get anywhere close to stealing it. And FlyQuest, it sets them up with Dragon Soul Point with the Baron buff in their hands so that Whipple can split push on bottom side as well up to the tower. Let that cannon minion do some work for him and they go the yeah, Mortals thought they were gonna try to hard force this. It's a one for one trade. Ole for Inspired. You'd rather have the jungler killed off than the support. So I guess you can call that all right, but I don't think FlyQuest is done quite yet. Jensen and Busio still looking around as Masu pushes out the mid lane, just trying to accelerate his own experience and farm state with that. Busio is gonna regroup with him as Jensen falls back to the tier two turret. He's gonna keep protecting that bottom lane. Masu with the Baron buff on the minions, providing a lot of pressure here in mid onto the tier two turret, but does not want to stick around too long, recognizes that play in bot is already done, and IMT players should be on their way soon. All right, nice little reset here from FlyQuest. They just had their lead fully secured here. Um, Immortal's gonna have a hard time venturing out to make a comeback play, but that's what you have to do. Yeah. You have to lead with Sweeper, you have to clear out, make sure there are no wards where you're going, and then only play on two lanes. Um, you're kind of hoping that FlyQuest will try and play on all three lanes since they do have good split pushing and they, mm. they have such a big lead. And then you just want to concentrate your forces on maybe even just one lane <laughs> and, and go with the Blitzcrank uh, plus the Varus to try and find that pick. Um, but at the very least, only play on two, just sacrifice one. You know, FlyQuest have a big advantage, so they're going to push in somewhere. And you just try and set up camp, try and make your surprise play, yeah. pick somebody off and then try and turn that pick into maybe an objective bounty, try and get uh, some real comeback money going. I mean, there's still that problem that you talked about a little bit earlier, though, with Whippo here on the Olaf. This guy has so much pressure in the side lane. He's up 50 farm against his lane opponent in Castle with the Aatrox. And Castle now just getting Wombo comboed with the arrow. Not going to hit in time. So Castle can get away, does use the World Ender there. And considering he's forced back, it's so easy for Jensen to take out the Tier 2 turret here for the top side. Immortal's going to do the same thing down in bottom lane and at least get themselves an objective bounty. And that's exactly what I'm talking about here. When Mortals make the call that is necessary, even though FlyQuest are going to get more out of it, they're going to push on all three lanes here. Um, they, Immortals try and concentrate their forces on the Blipwo. Unfortunately for them, Olaf can go immune to CC. Yeah, pops that. And he's got the experimental hex play to, to buff up his move suit, so he gets right out of there. But Immortals got an objective bounty. And if you just try and evenly match FlyQuest, you're going to lose at all points. Right. So rather lose two points and then at least win one and get some money back than just lose all three. You got to make some kind of a sacrifice when you're down 5,000 gold, right? Like your opponents are just at such a natural advantage. There is less than 90 seconds until what will be the soul for FlyQuest if they can secure that Drake. There's also only 45 seconds until the Baron. If you're in a mortal spot right now, the pressure is on. How do you navigate this? <sighs> Carefully, Flowers? That's uh, a good answer, okay. <laughs> trepidatiously, uh, check every brush, check every corner. Currently, there are two wards behind several me members of IMT. 
Uh, Whippo does have his teleport and his ultimate is back up and he just completed his jack show as well. So three item Olaf will come barreling towards you as well. If FlyQuest, boy. Yeah, if the FlyQuest just push out again on side lanes and then force the issue here, the dragon's only 40 seconds away. And as long as FlyQuest keep a little bit of vision around Baron, uh, the Hail Mary play for Immortals isn't really open to them of trying to rush the Baron down. They get a pull. Yeah, the pull on Whippo, though, is not quite the one they want. Mask is going to be focused down to the front line before anybody else, and Castle is not strong enough to zone away the rest of FlyQuest. Whippo is still berserking through enemy lines with the Ragnarok. It finally wears away, but Armeo is going to die. Jensen dominating 9-3 to three game, 2 for nothing fight. FlyQuest marching down the mid lane. <laughs> they pulled in a rabbit Olaf. <laughs> And they don't want anything to do with that Viking. They're going to run him right down. FlyQuest now are able to take probably both objectives. Uh, let's see. They're sending Busio down to scout out uh, the dragon and make sure that there's no headlong rush. Jensen is with him, so they also have damage here uh, to back up the scout. I mean, they got such good enemy players as their picks. The jungler, so there's no steal potential. The corky, so there's no poke or package threat. Probably the best two guys you could have eliminated there if you could only get two. Tactical, that was Q auto, by the way. About 60% of his health from just two hits there from Jensen Vizier. Yeah. As now with the Baron claimed, FlyQuest went ahead, did their recall with most of the other players. They're going to bring everybody down to the Drake now. It will be exactly what you said, my friend. It's a Baron into an Ocean Soul. I like the attempt there from Tactical. Just shoot the arrow over the wall. Hope he randomly missed smites it, but not going to happen. This game is now FlyQuest's to lose all the way. I love it when people start buying the, the potions as well. You know, when you have these kind of last chance fights, yeah. that 500 gold is for sure worth it for the temporary power boost, just to even have a chance at coming out ahead, uh, getting that little bit of an edge, even though you aren't going to have a lot longer left in the game with the Dragon Soul as well as the Baron pushing power coming through here and the giant item lead that FlyQuest have. They're not even going to play all three lanes anymore. They're like, forget it. We're just going to push on two and make sure we can get right inside the base. I mean, we were talking about these most valuable prospects in Masu and Busio, and man, they're having a good game here. Both of them tied for highest kill participation on their team. We've been hyping up the Jensen Azir because, yeah, he's six out of the nine kills, but seven kill participation for both bottom laners. Ole again yeah. is going fishing and catching a damn shark. <laughs> Inspired ends up getting the kill, and Whippo leads the charge. It's two dead on FlyQuest with a long-range snipe. Double kill back over to Inspired to make it three. Whippo is not done, but a Mortals sure are. FlyQuest pushing straight onto the Nexus turrets now as Mask will not stop anybody. FlyQuest still pushing this one as Jensen. He does not fall. He has the stasis to guarantee that he stays alive. FlyQuest still has all five players in the enemy base. Immortals tried, but Immortals died. FlyQuest gets themselves a 2-0 week one. When did they give Olaf an 800 range dash, Flowers? That seems scary. Seems pretty OP. That's a dangerous design choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ole, unfortunately, when you go for the hook and the Olaf just wants to hop on that train, <laughs> it's going to be a bad time. FlyQuest looking pretty good in that one. Immortals, it's back to the drawing board. A 0-2 week to start things off in spring 2024 for them. FlyQuest all smiles here after their 2-0 week. Very, very big confidence builder for this squad that was put together. So many changes coming through for FlyQuest. They got new jerseys, new setup, and starting out 2-0.